Is that, can you hear me now? How's that? Well, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming out this morning. And um, my name's Gary, and this is Jennifer, and we're from a company called Cinema Zoo Animal Agency. We're also known as Urban Safari Rescue Society. And uh, what we do is rescue a lot of animals, mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians from people who uh, bought them maybe as pets or had them given to them and found out that uh, they weren't great pets. They got too big for the house, too mean and dangerous, sometimes illegal to keep. And uh, before you get any pets, you always have to check with um, places like Fish and Wildlife to make sure that these animals are legal to keep in your home. Now, they also, um, we try to find homes for them and rehabilitate them back into the wild if they are native to British Columbia. And right now we're dealing with some venomous snakes that we're trying to get back to their homeland in Texas. So we just um, hope we can find them. Now, what we're gonna start off with is um, some animals that, uh, they have a couple here, but we've got some interesting <laughs> ones as well. And uh, we're gonna start off with animals that uh, are really misunderstood. These animals are in a family called arachnids. And arachnids uh, consist of spiders and scorpions and some species of ticks. Now, there are uh, something like 40,000 different types of spiders in the world. And every spider is poisonous, but not every spider is dangerous. Some won't bite, some can't bite, their fangs aren't equipped to go through your skin to deliver the poison. And some, they can bite you and you never even knew you got bit until you see some um, marks maybe, a bit of swelling, maybe you feel sick. And it couldn't be, could be the result of a spider bite that you didn't feel hit at the time. Now the first one we're going to have and you can put the other one right here. Right here. We're going to use Jennifer as our model. And the first one we have is called a Mexican red knee tarantula spider. Now she shed her skin just about four days ago. And she's a really beautiful little spider. This spider here is 23 years old. I've had it for 22 years. It was given to me as a yearling. And um, this spider's been in many movies, TV shows, advertising. It was even in a Japanese game show. <clears throat> and they came from Japan. They filmed the spider and myself. And they sent me back a copy of the, uh, the show. And I discovered something about myself that I never knew. I can speak Japanese. <laughs> but my lips were going a lot different than the words. But uh, this spider here has been, it, it's a very harmless spider. Um, in the family of tarantulas, which we all think are the worst because they're the biggest. And movies have portrayed them as monsters and killers and sometimes as big as Volkswagens. But you know what? These are gentle giants. There are some that are aggressive and can make you very sick. But most of the spiders are no worse than a, one of these beastings out here. Some of them, um, you know, won't bite at all, like this one. But the next one I'm not sure about. <laughs> the, uh, this one here, this is its very first time out. It's called a salmon belly bird eating spider. So. So you can see this spider has good size to it. It will grow bigger. And the largest of all the bird-eating spiders is called the Goliath bird-eating spider. And it's been known to get about 13 inches across, the size of a large dinner plate. That's the spider we don't want to play with. But this one here has been known to be non-aggressive, so we're right behind it. <laughs> so these spiders here are spiders that uh, you can see sit where they're supposed to sit. And in the movie industry, when we use these spiders, we can get them to move by spraying air on them because they don't like any kind of a breeze. So they'll move away from a breeze. So let's see if we can get them off without any injury here. Yeah. 
for me. Here you go. Is well, the most poisonous animal I brought here today. This animal has been responsible for human death. Many mammals, birds, and reptiles have succumbed to this animal. And it's an animal that is a great example of what can go wrong when people mess around with nature. This animal is called the cane toad. Now the cane toad has large poison sacs right below its uh, eyes here and it has all these bumps all over its body. It's not true. You do not get warts from toads. But this um, gland can produce a milky-like substance that if you ingest it, then you can really get sick or die from it. A lot of people have gone into comas and not come out of them. Now they originated in South America where they're called the marine toads. But a farmer in Australia <clears throat> was having trouble with beetles consuming his sugarcane crops and he wanted to get rid of these beetles. But he didn't want to use chemicals because that could harm other animals. So he heard about these guys eating a lot of insects and he brought them over to Australia and released them on his farm. Well, lo and behold, he discovered that beetles can fly and toads can't. So he didn't do a very good job getting rid of the beetles, but they started eating everything in sight. And with no natural enemies, they started to uh, multiply like crazy. And pretty soon they were swarming all over the land, roads, parking lots, schoolyards, you name it. And they became a real pest, eating a lot of the native insects and small amphibians and small reptiles and even baby birds. Anything that fit in their mouth was food. And so people were pretty upset about them. You couldn't even put your dog food outside anymore because the toads would come along and eat all the dog's food out of his dish. And then the dog would come back and say, hey dude, you just ate my dinner. And try to eat the toad and that would be the end of the dog. So they were really a nuisance. And only recently they've discovered that they've developed one natural enemy so far. It's called the kookaburro bird. And so they're starting to consume some of these toads. Now this particular toad here is a bit of a movie star. He's been on TV for the last three months in a Mitsubishi commercial where he was sitting on the road and the car came along and there was all these frogs and toads on the road and the car stopped and the lady got out and she walked through the frogs and she came up to this one and it said, kiss me please. And so she kissed it and it turned into a handsome prince and on a horse, he got off the horse, gave her the horse, jumped in the car and took off. So, girls, don't kiss any toads because they'll steal your car. Our next one is my very favorite frog. This frog here is, his name is Arnold, and Arnold is an Argentine horn frog. Here he is. He's a cute, chubby little guy with a big smile on his face. But behind that smile lurks danger. He's got three really sharp dagger-like teeth. And he can bite pretty hard, I know, because he bit me one day and drew blood. And it took about five minutes to get him off my hand, three minutes of which I held him underwater until he thought it was a good time to breathe, let go of my hand. He also has a very, very sticky tongue in his mouth, which is, enables him to hold on to something he's captured so it can't escape and he can take his time to eat it. But these frogs aren't very bright. These, uh, they think they can eat anything that moves and most of them end up getting something too big to swallow and they choke to death. One day I was walking by his cage and I guess he was really hungry. He thought I was food. So he jumped out to attack me. But the silly frog forgot he was still inside the cage. And he hit the glass with his mouth wide open and his sticky tongue stuck to the glass and there he was hanging by his tongue looking really dumb. 